Hi, I'm Bill Donahue, President of the Catholic League. I want to address the 200th anniversary of Karl Marx. Uh, he was born on uh, May the 5th, uh, back in 1818, and uh, here we are 100 years later, and a lot of people are celebrating him. I don't know what they're celebrating unless you like blood. There's a lot of blood on his hands, Marx's hands, and on the people who support him, which is a large swath of those people in the professoriate, particularly in the humanities and the social sciences. Now, what I'm going to talk about here today, they either know nothing about because they're ignorant, they haven't read much, or if they do know about it, they get angry at me when I've discussed this with them, and as I have many times in the past. Everything I'm going to tell you can be documented. Some of the best sources on Karl Marx come from Paul Johnson, the great uh, British historian. Check out his book, Intellectuals. See his book, uh, The History of the Jews. See his book, uh, The History of Christianity. See his uh, other works that he's written uh, voluminously on the subject of, of Marx, as, as many others have as well. Now, well, I said that Marx has a lot of blood on his hands. Let me be specific. Under Marx's name, the Soviet Union killed 61 million people. Now, I can't even imagine that. I can imagine maybe, you know, 50, 60,000 people in a stadium watching baseball or football. I can't envision what it's like to kill 61 million people. That's how many died, 43 million under Stalin, 61 million under the Soviet Union in the 20th century. In his name, they followed his prescription for the good society. Now what about China? China was worse. Under Mao Zedong, took over in 1949, he killed 77 million people. 77 million innocent men, women, and children in China dead as a result of Mao Zedong, the great hero there. Now, Hitler, whom everybody rightly condemns, what about him? He killed 21 million, 6 million of whom were Jews. Now, Here's the hypocrisy, people. If you want to condemn Hitler, and you should, you also must condemn uh, Stalin, what happened in the Soviet Union, and you must condemn Mao and what happened in China. If you do not, when Stalin and, and uh, Mao were far worse than Adolf Hitler, far worse, far, the body count is dripping with blood, then you are just simply a phony, or just a cover-up for Karl Marx. And that's what's going on. By the way, I forgot Pol Pot. You know Pol Pot, the communist in Cambodia who followed Marx's ideas? He killed proportionately more people than Hitler, Stalin, or Mao. He killed two out of every seven million people who lived in Cambodia under the name of Karl Marx. Which is why those, those people say, well, you can't blame this on Marx. Oh no, we can. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the great Russian freedom fighter, was right when he said that Stalin uh, didn't pervert Marxism. He perfected it. That's a great statement. There is a direct and ineluctable line between Marxism and genocide. If you're concerned about genocide, you have to be concerned about Karl Marx because he's the intellectual antagonist behind Marxism, obviously, which has been adopted by the Soviet Union, China, and obviously in Cuba and places like that as well. Now, what about Marx the man? Was he a humanitarian? Did he care about the poor? No, he didn't care about the poor at all. As a matter of fact, he lived a, a very pampered existence. The guy was unemployed most of his life. He couldn't hold down a job. He had all kinds of ulcers and smells to him that people couldn't stand to be around him. Uh, the guy was, was a sloth. Uh, he was also a sponge. He, he, he took a, uh, an advance on his inheritance from his parents because he wouldn't work. Uh, he actually had a maid. Now, how many of the working class have maids, people, particularly back in the 19th century in Germany or any place for that matter? Now, he wrote a great deal about the proletariat. That's the urban factory worker. Do you know, you know how, many how much time he spent in the urban factory? None. As Paul Johnson said, there's no evidence that Karl Marx ever set foot in a factory in his entire life. Everything he wrote about the working class, whom he didn't give a damn about, quite frankly, he had his own maid there. Uh, this is a guy who gleaned it from his writings and what, what he, and from hearsay. Now, this is, this is not a man that we, uh, we can admire. You know, he talked famously about the classless society. Of course, they never got there, did they, people? Let me tell you something. You have to be an intellectual moron to think that you ever get rid of inequality. It is the most natural aspect of the human condition. Hierarchy. You know where it begins? In the family. As soon as the child is born, he dies unless he has a parent or at least some adults who will watch out for him. You have instant inequality. Marx said, 
This is his great line. In order to establish equality, we must first establish inequality. Well, first of all, there's always inequality. Now, isn't that interesting? To get to equality, the class society, we have to first establish inequality. And then we can do away with the dictatorship of the proletariat and we'll have the class of society. Well, guess what? Every attempt at Marxism does have a dictatorship of the proletariat, but that's where it ends. It stalls. It never gets beyond that. And by the way, who is going to be in charge of the dictatorship of the proletariat? Marx is very clear about it. The intellectuals, that would be people like him. Okay? They would be in charge of the dictatorship of the proletariat. Now, what would the communist society look like? Well, he said you could do anything you want. It wouldn't be like a regular society. You could hunt in the morning, you could fish in the afternoon, you could raise cattle in the evening, you could criticize after, after dinner without ever being a hunter or a fisherman or a herdsman. That's pretty much an exact verbatim statement. Read about it, people. I don't make this stuff up. Read about it. Read about it in the German ideology, one of his classic books, 1848. I know this stuff inside and out. I used to teach it to my students. My students actually learned about Marx because they didn't lie to them the way so many professors do. Now, this, this sounds like the musings of a child. You can hunt in the morning, fish in the afternoon. What, what, what are we talking about here? And by the way, I thought that uh, communism comes after capitalism. Well, capitalism has an industrial order. It has factories. This sounds like a pre-industrial order. You know, they continue with this idea that Marx is, is the great humanitarian. There's an article, April the 30th of, uh, of 2018 in the New York Times by a guy by the name of Jason Barker, who's a South Korean professor. He's in the wrong part of Korea. He should go to North Korea if he likes Marx. guess they wouldn't let him live there too long. But this guy comes out and he says, we have to credit Karl Marx with the Black Lives Matter. Yeah, and the hashtag me too. I don't know where these people went to school. I really don't know. Black Lives Matter from Karl Marx. There was a labor leader called Ferdinand LaSalle. You know what he called him? The Jewish nigger. That's what Marx referred to him. The Jewish nigger. And what did Marx think about Jews? He was a Jew. He was a self-hating Jew. He said Jews were only interested in huckstering and money. Marx, the Jew, was an anti-Semite and a racist. Now what about, was he a great woman's liver? The hashtag Me Too people crediting him, or Barker is? Not exactly. You know that maid that he had? This is after he got married, he had a maid? Her name is Lenchen. L-E-N-C-H-E-N. Check it out, people. Guess what he did? He knocked her up. That's right. He impregnated her, never gave his own kid, his name, the name of the son is uh, Freddie, never gave him a dime because he didn't want people to know, to ruin his reputation, that he had an out-of-wedlock son. So who raised the kid? <laughs> Guess what? Are you ready for this? Frederick Engels, his colleague, the guy he wrote with. Now, how do we know that Engels assumed paternity for Marx's kid? Because on his deathbed, Engels admitted it. Marx is Freddie's father, not me. And, you know, sadly, he had a daughter, Eleanor. She knew her, that her father was a phony, and she wrote to him and told him, you don't give a damn about the poor and the dispossessed. She later committed suicide. There's more blood on the hands of Karl Marx. You want to find out about Karl Marx, read about it. But don't listen to the professoriate, because they won't tell you the truth, either because they are willfully ignorant, or they simply don't know. Now you know something. You shouldn't be celebrating Karl Marx's 200th anniversary um, any more than you should be celebrating Hitler. Thank you.